Today, we'll be talking about an intriguing variety of shark, which was discovered in Mexico almost a decade ago, and today still causes debate among paleontologists. First though, I want to say that this topic is covering a fair bit of speculation. Yeah, that. Not just on our part at ScienceGet, but on the parts of the paleontologists who discovered and studied this fossil. Because so far we have just one instance of this species. So we're just gonna keep that speculation light on and mute the alarms unless we get really weird. But before we do that, be sure to hit that like button, comment your favorite shark-based movie, smash that subscribe button, check out the Patreon, and ring that bell to never miss a video. I'm Eric Malachite, author of Echoes of Olympus Mons, and this is Science Gat. Aquila mana milarque, milarque, or eagle shark, was discovered in 2012 in a quarry in Nuevo Leon, Mexico. It wasn't until 2021 that a paper would attempt to describe this majestic animal. It was described as a shark that is roughly five and a half feet long by six feet, with a wingspan, and I put that in quotes, longer than its body. Based on its fin structure and the possible skin impression of the fossil, it's been inferred that this shark was a filter feeder, slowly gliding through the oceans, collecting plankton on its way. However, this is a single fossil with no teeth to speak of in the fossil remains. These two factors are very important. While we are not paleontologists, it is always important to remember that inferences and assumptions can creep into scientific findings. Quite easily, actually. The lack of teeth has actually left some room for other paleontologists to disagree with Dr. Vulo at all. The eagle shark, we'll call it that because saying Aquilamana melarque, melarque, repeatedly risks spraining my tongue. Specimen was uncovered from a piece of limestone by an unknown quarry worker in 2012 from the Vallecillo limestone quarry and would soon come to the attention of Margarito Gonzalez. Gonzalez, who would be among Romain, Volo, and many others to study this unusual fossil. He and his colleagues gave the shark its name and in their paper described it as an unusual specimen of shark. During that period of the fossil record, it was thought that all the stranger varieties of sharks had died out before the Cretaceous period. It's been stated that this shark resembles a ray and that is an undeniable similarity. Yet at the moment, it has been given its own genus and is not presently thought to be the ancestor of rays or sharks. Since it is the only example of its kind, there is uncertainty about whether the eagle shark sported the iconic dorsal fin that everyone expects on sharks, or if it had a flat streamlined body similar to the rays it so closely resembles. Its tail and tail fins resemble sharks by all interpretations, though whether it is closer to the tails of filter feeders like whale sharks or the sleek fins of predatory sharks of our era, Volo and his colleagues would go on to suggest that this species was likely a planktivore due to the wide gaping shape of its mouth, the wide span of its fins that Volo stated were likely used for stabilization, and the tail, which provided slow forward mobility. This fish is bizarre though, and given how much could be decayed and the debate going on about whether certain details of the fossil are in fact skin impressions or not, the eel shark could look and feed very differently. We have to keep in mind that this fossil is 60 to 90 million years old. Its similarities to modern life and its placement in the fossil record are very important, as is the fact that this is all the study of a singular fossil comparing it to hundreds of living and extinct species. Like rays, it sported a flat body and wide mouth, which could lead many to the easy conclusion that it fed on plankton. It has the slender and sleek tail of a modern shark, which given that even whale sharks sport this, lends another example to the case that it once fed by filtering plankton through baleens. Baleens are the comb-like teeth that most filter-feeding sea life use to collect their meals. However, there are no preserved baleens or teeth of any kind. So roughly 90 million years ago, the seas were full of life, from aquatic lizards to shelled invertebrates like ammonites, bony fish, and other large sharks. This species hypothetically floated around the oceans, grazing on the copious plankton that lived throughout the ocean. We don't know when exactly this species went extinct, since we have only a single fossil as evidence of its existence. Present estimates are vague, but it is thought that this specimen died shortly after the asteroid impact that wiped out most megafauna on the planet. 
After the asteroid hit, the oceans underwent extreme calcification and acidification, which caused the death of many species. Plankton, which they think was the main source of food for eagle shark, also took a serious dip at this time, and probably led to this species dying off. This specimen, in particular, was believed to be preserved when its body sunk into the soft soil of the seafloor where it lay hidden from scavengers to be preserved. The limestone slab it was encased in is the main reason for this conclusion. It's thought, however, that this species isn't related to the present variety of sharks and rays throughout Earth's oceans. The eagle shark predates rays by nearly 30 million years, while most sharks of the Cretaceous period had begun to resemble the slim torpedo-like bodies of their modern counterparts. The eagle shark, however, brings into question whether there weren't more varieties of aquatic life floating through the seas of the Cretaceous period. As we've mentioned, this fossil is the only specimen yet uncovered of the eagle shark. That alone is enough in this case to establish a new species, and that's because we have a complete fossil. It's relatively unmistakably unique, yet it's rather difficult for fossils to form. There are reasons we tend to find fossils from some eras more often than others. This has entirely to do with the conditions required for a fossil to form, and there are various kinds of fossils as well that we can find. In this case, the eagle shark was discovered because, like many ocean species, it sunk to the seafloor and into the sediment. There, over many eons, the seafloor became compressed and fused, the body of the eagle shark becoming part of the limestone, leaving a discoloration as minerals replaced organic compounds through its body. The seafloor makes the fossilization process difficult. Many times, a corpse that falls to the seafloor will be consumed by various scavengers that live at floor level, decomposing the carcasses of dead fish and the leftovers predators drop. This exposes the bone to the seafloor and accelerates decay. There are other forms of fossilization that occur. On land or inland, a few situations can produce a fossil. In ancient forests, mostly insects, scales, feathers, and plants have been preserved in amber. However, occasionally small lizards and amphibians have been preserved, even a single baby bird encased in amber. Otherwise, a fossil must die in an arid, dry environment. This lack of moisture stunts the decay process and allows minerals to leach into the tissue and preserve the carcass. We mentioned fossils in land though, and this is where it gets even more interesting. Whole animals and human remains have been discovered in ancient tar pits and peat bogs. In both cases, these environments preserve the specimens by their unique properties. In the tar pits, the skeletal remains could be pulled up due to the extreme heat and chemistry of the pits. Peat bogs preserve fossils in a different way. Similar to the calcification and acidification of the oceans that help preserve the eagle shark, the extreme acidity of peat bogs preserve a body which sinks into the bog similarly to pickling or tanning. Essentially, the bodies that have been found, mostly human remains and the occasional livestock, are wet mummies. Ew. However, it seems as though the process must begin in early winter or spring. That is, the animal or person must be submerged in the bog during the colder months, or else the higher temperatures will cause decay to start. We have this much information because for a time, ritually sacrificing people by poisoning and submerging them in a bog was a tradition in some places that are now European regions. Now that's fantastic. If you dug this content, be sure to drop a like and comment your favorite thing about fossils. And be sure to smash that subscribe button, ring that bell to never miss an episode of Science Get, and check out the Patreon, where you can get early access to new episodes of the show, your name in the credits, short science fiction, horror, and dark fantasy stories, and more. I'm Eric Malachite, and this is Science Get.